Five more COVID tests done, all of them negative. The Prime Minister urges Belize not to panic. And the government sends out a national quarantine order only for the AG to say there is no national quarantine. Also, the AG says patient zero could be charged for spreading the virus. We'll show you the woman charged for spreading panic on social media. Plus, coping with COVID. We'll show you one chef who's making meals with five ingredients or less. And how is your mental health doing in this stressful time? Well, we'll talk to a counselor about holding it together when your world seems like it's falling apart. We've got details of these and all the stories in our newscast for tonight, Thursday, March 26, 2020. Good evening. With your news, I'm Indira Craig. time to sign up for the best postpaid plans in the country because Digi has doubled the data in all their plans. Now you can get even more done, connect even more, stream even more, create even more and share even more. All on the fastest mobile network that gives you the most coverage nationwide. Now is the time to go postpaid with plans starting as low as $49 monthly. Shared plans are also available, all with unlimited talk and text. So don't wait. Hurry over to your nearest Digi store to sign up today. Enjoy double the data in all postpaid plans only with Digi. Get information from a respectable international or official local source. When in doubt of COVID-19 information, verify before sharing or repeating the information. Prepare for COVID-19 with an easy plan of action for yourself and your family to put into practice to avoid or reduce the spread of the illness. Be calm and continue to stay informed of the developments of COVID-19. Adjust your plans where necessary based on official advisories. Your local health authority can provide the best information on whether COVID-19 is spreading in your area. If you become seriously ill with cold or flu-like symptoms, please contact your doctor or nearest health center. For more information, contact the Ministry of Health at our toll-free number 0800-MOH-CARE or through our Facebook pages, the Ministry of Health Police or the Office of the Director of Health Services. We are here to help you. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. Reach BEL at any time from anywhere for service requests or queries. Call free at 0800 BEL Care or 0800 235 2273. Send a text message to 235. Email belcare at bel.com.bz. Send us a Facebook message or use our online chat at bel.com.bz. In life, there's always two sides to every story. Good stuff, not so good stuff. Originals, knockoffs. Real news and fake news too. And that other so-called postpaid thing. Then there is smart, select postpaid plan. Check this out. For just $75 a month, you get 27 gigs of data, unlimited text message and calls on and off net. Now this is the perfect postpaid plan for gamers, streamers, and social media junkies. Pretty much anybody who talks all the time and lives on the internet fast lane. 27 gigs of data, unlimited calls and messages. Now that's full true postpaid. It doesn't get any better than that. Never settle for cheap imitations when you can have Smart's select postpaid plan. Only with Smart, you get truly unlimited everything. Belize Tax Service Department reminds all employed persons that the deadline to complete and submit their employee income tax return form is Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. By now, employers were to have given employees their TD4 form, which provides official information relating to the process. 
You can download the income tax return form by visiting incometaxbelize.gov.bz and then clicking publications and forms. The form downloads automatically when you click income tax return form for employees. You are to completely fill out the form ensuring that the information entered is accurate and truthful. If you require help to complete your income tax return form, you can access a thorough video tutorial by visiting the Belize Tax Services website or Facebook page. We thank you for being a responsible citizen. Streaming made easier with NextGen. NextGen's internet and MyTV packages makes fast streaming even more satisfying. Our new MyTV Connect, MyTV Sports, and MyTV Star package gives you the power to stay up to date. Enjoy more family time and share the excitement with our beloved sports fans. Conveniently, affordably, and now instantly to all your devices. Sign up now and get one month free internet and a one month free MyTV Connect trial. Or upgrade to 130 megs and get one year free MyTV Connect trial. Or bundle your next gen cable with 130 megs internet and get one year free MyTV Star trial. So what are you waiting for? Visit any of our branch offices and sign up for next gen today. We open tonight with an update on COVID-19 in Belize. There are still only two positive tests, both from San Pedro. Five more tests were done last night, and they all came back negative so far. A total of 82 tests have been performed, 80 negative and two positive. And that's why, in a special message to the nation tonight, Prime Minister Dean Barrow is telling the nation not to panic. Here's a portion of the 10-minute dress rehearsed about an hour ago. My primary message is to assure you that you are not alone, neither in your anxiety about the present challenges nor your preoccupation about the future. I thus reiterate to every Belizean that my administration, together with the national committees, will spare no effort, will action every partnership, will lose no opportunity to cushion the economic impacts and minimize the medical repercussions of this pandemic. First and most important, we can feed ourselves. And there are two things that are important in this connection. The global supply chain that facilitates imports of essential inputs for our country is not being broken. Even more important, though, is the fact of Belize's self-sufficiency in all basic commodities. With our local production of grains, meats, vegetables, and poultry products, we are able to dig in for the long haul. Second, government is determined to deploy a diverse range of fiscal and monetary measures to fortify our economic structures and bring us through. Broadly speaking, all options are on the table and every backing we can at all come up with will be used to stabilize the economy and underpin the welfare of the Belizean people. Third, our team of public health care professionals, reinforced by a first-rate medical brigade from our Cuban allies and buttressed 
by a massive investment in emergency equipment and supplies will relentlessly identify, isolate and treat cases of COVID-19. I repeat that as hard as the circumstances are, there is no need to panic. And even if we have to take the ultimate step of a national shutdown, there will be no interruption of essential services. Access to food, pharmaceuticals, and other necessary supplies will be guaranteed. But the PM's panic disclaimer aside, at midday today, it seemed that all of Belize froze when an official press release went out titled, Government of Belize enacts quarantine order for entire country. It sounded like the COVID-19 lockdown we have all been waiting for, either with dread or anticipation. But it turns out it was not. The headline was over the top, and what we all thought was a national lockdown was in fact just a list of simple rules to contain the spread of COVID-19. A few minutes after the quarantine order came out, Attorney General Mike Perifit appears on the government's Ask the Experts show to say there is no national quarantine. The country is not under quarantine, just certain rules have been made so that we can practice some social distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19 if it exists and we don't know where it does in certain places, if it does exist. All we're saying is that no persons shall gather in numbers of more than 10 anywhere in Belize in any public place, public space. We're saying now that if you're out in the public and you're in a space where there's less than 10 people, then keep a distance of three feet from the nearest person to you. So that is what we're pushing for and asking for within the country. Every person shall practice social distancing. And it's, def it's def defined in the rules in the SI that was just passed. And it just means stay home if you can, avoid crowds, and refrain from touching one another as much as possible. We're also saying that people may, for better or for worse, need to move around the country. And if they have to go to work or choose to go to work, we're limiting the transportation on the buses to the seating capacity of the bus. So if the bus only seats 30 people or 25 people, that's the maximum amount of people that can be on the bus. The seating capacity, no standing on the buses. Whenever a bus stops at a terminal, everybody must come, must come off, even if that's not your last stop. The bus must be sanitized, and the people, before they come back off, have to be sanitized, along with new passengers that are coming onto the bus. As of now, casinos and gaming establishments are to be closed. Spas, beauty salons, barber shops are to be closed. Gyms, sporting complexes are to be closed. Discotheques, bars, rum shops, nightclubs are to be closed immediately. Restaurants, saloons, diners, and other similar establishments are to be closed except that restaurants, saloon diners, and other similar establishments may operate to offer takeout services only. Next thing. No person shall host nor attend a private party which includes any person from outside of the immediate household of the house occupant. No more house parties, no more private parties, unless it's being done with people who live at the house. Because remember the overall team, we want people to be encouraged to stay home as much as possible. There's to be no recreational or competitive sporting events. No wedding which hosts 10 or more persons other than the bride, bridegroom, official witnesses, and the marriage officer. A banquet, ball, or reception, those are not supposed to happen anymore. No more social events. 
any other ceremony of public worship in any facility or public space which involves the participation of any member of the general public. No more public worship. None of that. Certain churches have already discontinued mass celebrations. No funeral except 10 members of the immediate family and at least one official and essential mortuary staff. I repeat, the country is not on quarantine. The country is not being locked down. Life goes on. It's just that there are certain measures we're putting into place. You can still go to work. You can still socialize if you have to. We know that the rules do have the force of law and were made by the quarantine authority of Belize. Notably, under these new rules, the number of persons on a bus is no longer limited to 25 or less. The regulations say, quote, notwithstanding the restriction and limitations on public gathering, the provision of public transportation by bus is limited to the seating capacity of the bus, end quote. And also notably, when we visited the bus terminal this evening, the new measures were not in effect. Those at the bus station tell us it will go into effect tomorrow when they will have water and soap for passengers to wash their hands. But like we said, if you're talking about relaxing rules for the number of persons allowed on the bus, well, clearly you're not talking about a national quarantine. And this evening, the heading on the release was changed to say government of Belize enacts safety measures. But that news hadn't reached the street yet when we went out to gauge public sentiment. It was just a few minutes after the release of the screaming headline about a national quarantine. And Cherise Halsal spoke on the street to some who seems either clueless, unfazed, or resigned to any COVID measure. I understand you know, this whole universe right now as a small businessman. He make my business poor right now, right? And you can't scratch your hand or touch things because that will make you get infected. You know, this situation uh, the prime minister said everywhere will she be open and when i look upon the tongue the corona really affect Belizean people because the grocery store you go in there the item they go up you go to the fish market you go to the finnegan market everything they go up the only thing that they go up that will really pay my work for a shipping company well, affected no way that shipping company right so that by sea so it really affect we no way if you're going to cargo you want to send from America, just continue to send a cargo by air or by water. You know, if you want to get, get any groceries sent for your family, send it. You know, I know people receiving groceries from the port still it, so that is good. They just institute a quarantine. I mean, what do you understand by that? means that you're supposed to be isolated, you know, uh, in close zero by yourself or with whomever, no? So, I mean, are you afraid of the coronavirus at this point? I'm very scared, but I have to come get some stuff so I can get it. To you notice you barely see anyone, so it look like people actually is afraid. You could tell me what you understand by the quarantine. Oh, uh, who? The quarantine, they just put down a quarantine. What's, I don't know what is quarantine. Are you afraid of getting the coronavirus? Nah, I got bigger, 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 bigger people that have the coronavirus. I need bigger people that have the coronavirus. So if bigger than over here. How has all of this affected your business? Well, automatic, slow. Slow, but I don't know I could do. But I just gotta hang a beer. Well, I gotta say about that, that um that for the wicked people in that where they practice this, this scientific thing and this biological warfare business thing that they come back to. You got natural thing out for the earth, you could deal with feeling, feeling, feeling kind of biological thing there. You get your garlic, you get your onion, you get your ginger. You don't need nothing else. And your body on pure because of radiation, you can't handle heat. I said, right? Yeah. So if your body got a uh, temperature among a heat, you want to war against that. Yeah, simple. Come on, so come on again. Are you scared of getting the coronavirus? Yes, indeed. Can we deal with kids? So, I mean, if you got it, what would you do? Stay home. That for the safety of me, my co-workers, and my, the kids I, I take care of. Are you afraid of getting the coronavirus? Of course, yes. What's the most frightening thing you've heard on the news about this virus? Wow. But you can't read. I quarantine myself. I don't think I need Danny Briseno. Dean Barrow for tell me that. Yes. So. I'm out of my bed. When I go in back, I take a full bath. 
You know, they wash my hand, I wash all over my body, my whole entire body. But what we worry me now is that we were not employed in a work for like almost two years now, and I see bags, they go wrong bags, they drop off there, and bags, they drop off there, and people they go for bags, and I don't see none no come my way, so I don't know how come they, I might have to send one map or a compass to Janet Briseno and the Barrow so that they could find me. The task force is handing out $150 every two weeks to every unemployed person, no matter how long you've been. I have to buy back on tennis shoe, because it's at $300. But I still appreciate it. Why just to send home? By the time I get it, I might have to buy an next thing unless I walk barefoot with my belly full. <laughs> to be honest, I heard about it, but then we still have to get out. We still have to come out here. We still have to work. We have to do things because if you're saying you're going to do quarantine, you're going to lock down everywhere. We can't stay at home. How will we pay our bills? So we still have to get out. We still have to come out here and work and do what we have to do. Of the quarantine to me. What? What do you mean? The quarantine. The sickness. No. The, the fact that the government has said that the whole country is under quarantine, that we should disassociate ourselves. Stay away from far. At this time, they keep a distance for me because I don't get sickness. If you doesn't have necessities to come out, and if it's not important, it doesn't need to come out, but you can stay home. You know, you don't want to get involved with people that um, is a part that willing to crowd up itself because we have to be careful. It's in the air. And what we need to do is not cr criticize or um, discriminate anybody, but let us just stay home and pray for one another. That's the best thing we can do. Louis Wade is like my dad, and he is also praying for the nation. We will cover the nation. So we want everyone to stop panic. But people are saying that they are still panic, but we're not supposed to panic. If we have enough faith and strong faith, we won't. What's about the quarantine? What do you understand it to mean so far? Hmm? Make we stay inside and make, make, you know, make the virus contagious. Are you scared of getting the coronavirus? No, mom. How come? I, if I catch it, I catch it. So, but are you taking precautions against it? Yes, mom. One and two. Um, and the rules about, you know, that not even ten, no more than ten people could be together at one time. How is that affecting you? It doesn't affect me now because I was by myself. So, you know, feel no way. It's just to help, help Belize and no spread it and no catch it. My fear is that it could kill anybody if your immune system can't cope. Right? But somewhere where I'm dead and somewhere where I live, that's the way I understand it. I think they should have somewhere about maybe a couple of miles out of town where they put some in a nice house and isolate people. I don't think it should be that hard with that because I think the proximity too close. Right? And it should be out of town. Eventually, everybody will catch corona, one way or another way. Shut down the whole system is not the solution. The solution is to protect yourself, wear your mask, wash your hand, and stay away a little bit. But you can keep people locked down. The whole world isn't designed to lock down. Belize didn't design to lock down. It's a small country. People can't live with $150 a month. People can't live with whatever the government gives them. People have to come out. And then we have to use another system of protection. Keep globe, put wear a mask or whatever, but people have to keep going. We have to open the shop. We have to go to work. This is a new life system. We have to get used to it. Lockdown is not the solution for the whole world. We have to keep it. Eventually, more people will catch corona. Eventually, more people, some will die, some will survive, but we have to come out. Me, me wash my hand every day, put on my gloves, but right now I don't got no gloves, no, no mask. I have to buy my leave mask and my gloves, buy my hand sanitizers, I guess some for somebody. Wash that calf quick. Uh, so you don't got no hand sanitizer right now? Not right now, but I will stay with it, yes. Okay. Um, so what's it been like being out of school? Happy makes me happy. Cause no pick me not there for me cause I get stressed. But now you afraid to get the coronavirus? No, mom. Why? Miss cause when the time for dead miss, when the time go for dead miss, I still it up for dead miss. I think that is crazy. I should have faith in a God. 
You don't have to worry about another slip guy life and nothing gonna bother you at all. So, but are you washing your hands on hand sanitizer? Of course, I got my liquid soap right here and my knapsack and I got my soap and everything right here. So, are you afraid of getting the coronavirus? I'm not scared, not scared. I'm a fisherman, I just came from one year and five months. Quarantine to mean? Better quarantine about the um, corona, miss. They say we're not drink rum and half you catch it. All right? So you better do that. For real. Fox of life. Try to make sure we secure and give we all what we need. Because we don't want your money. Let's make sure the family is there safe and secure. But are you, are you afraid of getting coronavirus? No. Of course not. I drink rum. I don't have Sutherland. Well, I'm quarantined. The government is telling us to isolate from each other to help to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Well, all I gotta tell you, mommy, my name is Mauro Richard Hila. I'm a smart man. I got a technical high. I want to tell you something. My brother is shot seven times in America and never dead. So, if you're not dead, the only way God will really feel. That's about it. Well, I am um, understand by the quarantine. The quarantine means I'm um, staying if you suspect you have it or something, like for 14 days. Yes, after 14 days, if you don't have no symptoms, then I think you're going clear. I don't think that's our good idea. I think this whole thing here, you have to have, you have to get out of the fear and trust in a God. We should stay indoors and it is safer for everyone because my understanding is that the virus cannot move by itself. So it move, people move it. Therefore, the more people stay home and avoid mass gatherings and association with other people, it will be less likely for you to catch it. If you look at the rest of the world, if you look at Italy and China and those other places, these places are first world countries in a sense. Belize are a tiny country and so I'm looking at the availability of the medics and the response to it. So, yes, we should be afraid as Belizeans, no? I should stay home. I, I would advise Belizeans to stay home. Sit down and stay home and stay, spend time with your kids or your spouse or whoever you have, no? The public safety measures also say that the quarantine authority may be a notice published in the Gazette declare the closure of any market or other public place. Now in San Pedro there's a real quarantine and a state of emergency in effect and it's been extended to 30 days. The town is in a virtual lockdown with no boats or planes in or out of the island. Things get a little busy between 7 and 10 a.m. when shops, bakeries and gas stations are permitted to open. But after midday, it goes back to silent mode. Residents tell us that those who still have money line up outside to get a turn inside the shops to get some groceries. It's a tough situation for the place known as Belize's Island Paradise, which has turned into a sort of soft prison for those who got stranded there when the quarantine order came down. Today, the Attorney General said the state of emergency may not last for 30 full days. No person shall enter nor exit Ambergis Key for the next 30 days, for the next 27 days. Nobody can go to Ambergis Key. Nobody can leave Ambergis Key. If you're not from Ambergis Key and you're quote unquote stuck there, we ask you to kindly be patient with us while we do a full mapping. Even though it is for the next 27 days, it may not last the full 27 days. In, in five days, in 10 days, we could come and say, listen, we have the issue contained and we no longer need the 30 days and we're revoking the declaration of public emergency. And while the Attorney General urges islanders and stranded persons to be patient, he has no patience for the island's patient zero. She infected her mother, age unknown, and according to authorities, it's because she did not stick to the rules of self-isolation. The Attorney General says she could face charges. We have to determine and we believe that she was warned upon arriving at the airport in Belize to immediately inform the Ministry of Health and to immediately self-isolate. By failing to do that, she may have committed an offence. We're currently looking at that as we speak. 
And I am telling you, if the evidence lines up that she committed that offense, we will certainly charge her with that offense. Note that the rules do have the force of law and were made by the Quarantine Authority of Belize. Notably under these new rules, the number of persons on a bus is no longer limited to 25 or less. The regulations say, quote, notwithstanding the restriction and limitation on public gathering, the provision of public transportation by bus is limited to the seating capacity of the bus, end quote. And also notably when we visited the bus terminal this evening, the new measures were not in effect. Those at the bus station tell us it will go into effect tomorrow when they will have water and soap for passengers to hand wash. And while the Attorney General urges islanders and stranded persons to be patient, he has no patience for the island patient zero. And we apologize. We will take a commercial break and be right back. ¿Mejor que textos ilimitados con tu plan postpago? ¿Qué tal llamadas nacionales ilimitadas 24-7? No hay mejor que eso, ¿verdad? En realidad sí, porque con el plan Plus Postpago de Smart, por solo $120 dólares al mes, también obtienes datos ilimitados. ¿Oíste bien? Textos ilimitados, más llamadas nacionales ilimitadas, más datos ilimitados. Es una muy buena oferta, ¿verdad? Lo cierto es que Smart es la única compañía de telecomunicaciones que ofrece planes verdaderamente postpago en Belice. Puedes hablar cuanto quieras, enviar cuantos mensajes de texto quieras, navegar o transmitir o descargar películas y videos tanto como quieras, sin límites. Ahora, eso sí es felicidad garantizada, además de pensar inteligente, Nunca se conforme con imitaciones baratas. Cuando usted puede tener el plan postpago Plus Smart, recuerde que es solo con Smart que usted consigue todo verdaderamente ilimitado. We experience many changes in life especially when it comes to style and technology. So why not change the way we build? With Coventech building panels from Venice, we can do just that. The construction capabilities of this panel is very unique compared to the traditional way of construction. The panel offers acoustic and thermal properties and can be installed within 50% of the time that a conventional construction would have been installed. The building is lighter, but yet more durable. Other fake building panels on the market can't compare to Coventech's engineered high-tension wire mesh frame, which will make your home stronger and highly resistant to impacts and weather conditions such as earthquakes and hurricanes. So whether for your homes, stairways, fences, or big building projects, let's change the way we build. Make sure to use the Coventech brand building panels available only at Benny's. Benny's in 60 seconds. It's already at comfort. So you need a mobile plan that can keep up. Digi is now offering unlimited talk and text. And double the data on all plans and up to 60 gigs for the plus plans. All backed up by the fastest and largest mobile network. More work, more fun, more you. Visit your nearest Digi store today. As one of the largest cable and internet providers in Belize, 
CBC strives to provide our customers with the highest standards of quality, value, and service in all aspects of cable TV and internet. Monitoring our systems closely, our technicians combine creative planning and state-of-the-art technology with years of experience and training to develop and provide the most reliable and advanced cable and internet service to exceed your expectations. For CBC and our team of talented engineers, technicians and customer service representatives, delivering less than the very best is never an option.
And yesterday in the Senate, AG Parafit announced that the state will no longer tolerate the spreading of any rumors related to COVID-19, which causes unnecessary public panic. Well, tonight, one person who has been charged is a social media panic spreader. In a first of its kind, Arrest 7 News has learned that 25-year-old Erica Yanira Vargas from Orange Walk has been charged for the offense of spreading false news. That's after she posted this bogus report on her page on Monday. The language is terrible and it's not easy to read, but it talks about, quote, a next case in San Jose involving an entire family, presumably a case of COVID-19. And while you might think she would be charged for bad grammar, police say the post went viral and created a public alarm in San Jose Village. And so Vargas has become the first person charged for the offense of spreading false news. A police press release a few weeks ago warned that noted a person who maliciously fabricated or knowingly spreads abroad or publishes, whether by writing or by word of mouth or otherwise, any false news or false report tending to create or foster public alarm or to produce public detriment is guilty of a misdemeanor. And hopefully there will also be charges for heartless landlords on San Pedro who are evicting tenants in the middle of a state of emergency on the island. We have received such reports this week and the AG said it is illegal. You can only be kicked out by virtue of a directive from the magistrate's court. Landlord can't come and kick you out. Most of these places who have rental agreements, by law, even if you don't have one by law, there must be a period of notice. And usually that notice is at the time when you pay the rent. So if you're paying the rent on a monthly basis, then you have um, 30 days notice, which is the length of the state of emergency. Mm. So you would have to wait until the state of emergency is over. Next thing, if you purposely kick a person out and you know that a person has nowhere else to go, Clearly, you have taken an action to me that will cause panic and fear, which means under the, the, the summary jurisdiction act, if you just do that one time like that, with no reason, just out of spite, then you are committing an offense. Not only that, no policeman can come and just take somebody out of a residence and say the landlord wants you out. The policeman must have a judicial order that says that. And the Attorney General also detailed the national curfew for children, which was signed into law yesterday. Under the curfew, minors must be accompanied by an adult between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Perifit explained. The child cannot be in public between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. alone. Have to be accompanied. And it says here, every parent or guardian who allows this child to go out in the public commits an offense so if you allow your child to break the curfew, the penalty will be paid by the parents, obviously not the child. So please monitor your children and make sure that they don't go out in the street without your presence between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. That's for the whole country, not just San Pedro. Two weeks ago, we told you about the layoffs at the Belize Tourism Board. The word that we got was that 50 staffers were being sent home. Well, it's actually 35, but they weren't just sent home. They got all their benefits with severance paid up, payment up to the end of March, along with an ex-gratia payment of three months' salary. The separation package comes with a commitment that once the tourism economy rebounds and job functions are restored, they will be considered for re-employment. 35 employees took up the offer and 65 employees remain on staff with a pay cut, which has not been decided on as yet. And that's necessary because with tourism in the shutdown, BTB isn't getting any hotel taxes or head tax collections. Thus, it has no revenue. Because of this, many, many job functions were deemed redundant, including hotel tax auditors, travel trade representatives, and those staffers who work at the border. Marketing and public relations staff were not cut, the director Karen Bevins tells us. Yesterday at the National Task Force press conference, we asked the Prime Minister about making such cuts. Or has the BTB not created a moral hazard in so far as 
how can they reasonably request tourism businesses who are hemorrhaging, how can they reasonably expect them to keep on staff when they were so quick to release staff? Well, the BTB insists that this was a measure it had to take because all their revenues were drying up, but uh, they were, as reported to me, scrupulous in ensuring that those that were laid off were paid uh, the proper severance or, or, yes, severance benefits so that my understanding, and this is, I'm not quoting from the BTB director, it's not verbatim, but my sense was that in the round, uh, those people being laid off or in, in the majority of cases, their separation package was such that it would see them through for at least three months. So if such persons apply, because as Dr. Barnett told you, uh, they would have to be screened by her and by Chris with the assistance of the BTB. The very BTB would be able to say, but Lord man, so and so can't qualify because so and so has received the equivalent of three or four months wages. The BTB has cut some of its smaller marketing contracts, but is keeping those in the USA, Canada, and Europe reportedly at a reduced agency retainer fee. Last night, we showed you our interview with Senate President Darrell Bradley. That was the conversation in which he discussed his decision to offer himself as a candidate for leadership of the UDP. Well, that press encounter allowed us the opportunity to ask him about the recent Belize City Council audit that Mayor Bernard Wagner disclosed two weeks ago in a press conference. Now, you'll remember how Mayor Wagner painstakingly outlined the assessment that Auditor Cedric Flowers did of City Hall's finances. A snapshot was taken of the last few months of Bradley's final term in office, and it was compared the same period during the Wagner administration's first year in office as the newly elected council. Wagner pointedly amplified findings in the audit where the Bradley administration could be criticized for engaging in overspending or imprudent spending of public funds. He then contrasted that to his own council's performance and the findings of the auditor that City Hall saved over a million dollars in expenses under his leadership. So, yesterday afternoon, we put that pointed criticism directly to the former mayor, and here's how he answered that. The suggestion was that your administration, there was waste and um, overspending of finances. If you've noticed, and I've made a deliberate thing to do this, because I've been on several talk shows, and people have given me the mic, and I have refrained from it. There's a certain value in politics which I think needs to be said. I have not once, not once, uttered a negative word about the current mayor of Belize City. That person is my mayor. I'm a citizen and resident of Belize City, and I want the city council to do well. I can stand here confidently and say that when I was mayor of Belize City, Belize City did well. I won two elections, and by wide margins, so that I had the confidence of residents of Belize City. That time, in terms of my leadership, has been closed. I did well. Nobody can say that I did anything improper, irregular, or whatever. Maybe there would have been policy directions that another political party, another leader would have chosen otherwise. That's their choice. So that a new person is in that space, and it is for them to prove to the Belizean people that they can do well. I would only add here that government is not about saving. So that when you have a surplus in your bank account, that is no victory for any administration. A government exists to deliver goods and services to people. And the main focus of municipal government is the physical infrastructure of a city, the physical infrastructure. And no one can say that in relation to the major focus of Belize City, we were not on par. And while the two mayors can criticize each other, anyone can take shots at what we saw today. A city council wingle pickup turned into a garbage truck. It was loaded sky high with orange bags and the council workers were taking on more. 
it looks like a council fresh out of garbage trucks. After all, it did sell a few last year. But a council spokesperson told us the truck in the video was an old traffic truck reassigned to the works department. She says that what it looks like is not what it is. She says the works men saw the garbage on the road and decided to assist. She added that the council currently has two garbage compactor trucks and a dump truck. The dump truck is currently down but should be up and running by weekend. In the meantime, why not a wingle, right? Since May of 2018, he's been on remand for murder. But tonight, 23-year-old Benjamin Alexander Reed is home free. That's after the DPP's office had to abruptly end their prosecution against him. Reed was charged with the May 2018 murder of 43-year-old Daniel Gardado, a Salvadoran mechanic and a working man with no known gang or criminal ties. Sometime between May 5th and May 6th of that year, Gardado was on Partridge Street Extension and reports to 7 News at that time was that he went to visit a mechanic friend to show off a new motorcycle he had purchased. He was reportedly having a conversation with his friend's brother when a gunman rode up on a bicycle. The assailant positioned himself to avoid raising alarm and he then opened fire, injuring Gardado multiple times. Gardado died shortly after being shot. Reed's murder trial without jury began two days ago before Justice Colin Williams and Senior Crown Counsel Shanice Lovell was depending on a key witness to testify against him. Unfortunately, neither the DPP's office or the police could locate that witness for today's testimony. And so the Crown Counsel was forced to enter a nolly pross against Reed. He was allowed to leave court today after it was explained to him that the DPP's office can bring criminal charges against him a second time if they believe that they have the evidence to prove their case against him. We'll take a break now. When we come back with COVID, we'll tell you about cooking and mental health. Don't go away. Now is the time to sign up for the best postpaid plans in the country because Digi has doubled the data in all their plans. Now you can get even more done, connect even more, stream even more, create even more, and share even more. All on the fastest mobile network that gives you the most coverage nationwide. Now is the time to go postpaid with plans starting as low as $49 monthly. Shared plans are also available, all with unlimited talk and text. So don't wait. Hurry over to your nearest Digi store to sign up today. Enjoy double the data in all postpaid plans only with Digi.
Mommy, it's okay. Just breathe. Do
In one way or the other, we're all trying to cope with COVID-19, the global pandemic. One thing no one wants to be uncertain about is whether or not they'll get their next meal. But in an economic downturn, where more and more people are losing their jobs, it's a real concern. And when it comes to preparing family meals for quarantine, any can cook can come find themselves a little overwhelmed. But if you're looking for a few ideas, here's an entertaining clip from Chef Sean Quilin. Quilin, who is currently camped on an island near Dangriga, says that most Belizean meals are cheap and simple and they can be made from five ingredients or less. So Chef Quilin, yeah, the red power leaf fisherman camp, people say things bad and not going to know you see no running water, no internet. But guess what? Uh, they live good. People they rail up because they least type in when they get. But make I tell you something. Everything you need, Belizean cuisine, the five ingredients or less. You don't need nothing more than this. You can make flour tortilla, fried jack, jani cake, bread and bun, alpha, and a little bit of flour, and a little shortening. You know, you switch out for the yeast, the coconut milk, the sugar, and spices. You got bun. Cross bun because you start the con. You got fish, steamed fish, fried fish, baked fish, hash fish, grilled fish, raw fish, fish ceviche. You can make fish soup, corn soup, cow food soup, beef soup, if things dread. Neck and back soup, caldo, chet chak, which one leave a caldo in a fish, some chak, the coconut milk with fish, serela sauce, hudo tapo bundiga, matilda foot, red beans, beans and rice, rice and beans. You could put it long water beans if you want. You could make split peas with dumpling, protein, the your beans, your hand meat or not. All of the above, the five ingredients in the rest, you could stretch your leave 150 for the fourth night. If you want uh, broke your budget, you could buy bad man and cigarette. Are you up to you, bruh? Well, one way they rush, go buy a lot of tiny paper. We're going to have this kind of deal. Last one, check rain, come from water. And if you don't have that, buy your municipal water. It already is chlorinated. And stop the waste time. When we're going to cook now. Stay safe, my people. Wash your hand. Cover your face and your calf. And live after the land. And be like me, buddy, there, man. Look there. Freedom, everything out in the open, no worry about nothing, things will get better. Quillen is planning to ride out the quarantine on the island. He says he may come in when the rum runs out. And what are you cooking in these difficult times? Well, we want to see your recipes with limited resources on a limited budget. 7 News is looking to feature your quarantine for COVID recipes. Let us know via Facebook how you prepare a family meal for less than $20. And, well, we'll share them as one communal way to cope with COVID. On March 11th of 2020, COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic, but accompanying the spread of the disease is a global rise in stress and anxiety levels. This comes as no surprise. We've all seen international news clips that feature plummeting markets, makeshift morgues, and senior citizens who not only die alone, but whose families are prevented from giving them a proper burial. It's no wonder that mental health professionals worldwide have commented that never before have they taken on something of this magnitude. And it's not just worrying about worrying's sake, because stress can affect the immune system, making it less efficient, not just in the short term, but in the long term. It affects our behaviors so that we don't sleep, eat, or drink enough water. It can also cause some to drink too much. Ultimately, stress is involved with the reduction of newer hormones that can affect the brain. And if Belizeans hadn't been going through it before, it hit us this week, one we'd confirmed our first imported case of COVID-19. We went looking for some coping mechanisms and spoke to Krista Courtney, Director of Monarch Counseling and Consulting. Courtney, a counselor herself, says it's important to recognize that when panic is going on, it's important to reframe. People are uncertain. And when human brain has questions it can't answer, it tends to respond with anxiety and fear. Um, and then that escalates very quickly to panic when people don't have a way to answer those questions. Um, so one of the concerns is, you know, what's gonna happen? That's a question everybody's asking, you know, and you can look and listen and read the news and try to come up with answers for that. 
Um, the truth is we don't really know exactly what's going to happen and it's okay to not know. I mean, we're reaching for answers, we're reaching for straws, but we really do have to sort of practice taking a few minutes to breathe because when we panic and we're, we're all of a sudden really, really scared, it kind of shuts down the executive function of your brain that is responsible for sort of thinking through, problem solving, finding new opportunities. Um, I think most people kind of grasp for keeping things the same, making sure that nothing changes. And I think that's really a trap because in times like these, a lot of things have to change. Um, but how they change can be a little better managed if we are able to kind of take a few deep breaths and think about, okay, what are my immediate needs for today? If you think about it, we're getting new information every day that's changing what the trajectory or the landscape of this might look like for us. And so when everything changes and maybe I lost my job last week, maybe this week now they're talking about how they're gonna help people who lost their job, okay. Um, so it's kind of taking things day by day intentionally, right? So there's, there's a double-edged sword here. There's the part that says, I don't have to have all the answers today and we kind of relax for two minutes. <laughs> And then there's the other part that says, but I want to have all the answers today, like, so that I feel safe. Um, and I think it's really just a conscious adjustment to expectations, right? That in order to feel safe today in a climate like this, that's unpredictable, that is fluid, it's changing constantly. Um, it's kind of like, just focus on today. Try to stay in the here and now. Tomorrow, we may have another set of information and so what can I do today? But what we hope to sort of convey is how to manage the fear of the unknown in the best possible way. MOH Care is there for questions about health. Mind Health Connect, of which I'm also a board member. I think there's um, some information coming later. Again, little resources that we find that we'll keep posting. Um, so it may not be there right now as we gather what's relevant for our communities and, and our country, but we will continue to release those things. So the Mind Health Connect website, I think it's www.mindhealthconnect.com. Um, also at monarchbelize.com, our website will start to put up information or ways that you can connect with a counselor if you need maybe a little half an hour mental health check-in <laughs> um, and reducing fees again to try to make that as accessible as possible um, and then we'll start to put out some more information as well as we sort of get a picture of what's happening and see how best to release the information to try to help as much as we can. Again, resources for coping with stress and rising anxiety levels around the current global pandemic for the Belize context can be found at mindhealthconnect.com and monarchbelize.com. Three weeks ago, the industrial action at the Port of Belize was all the news. And while operations have normalized at the Port of Belize, what about the 21 days notice of industrial action that the CWU gave? Well, without anyone noticing, the two sides have been talking, both in person and with exchanges of letters. The communication, we are told, has been positive and shows signs of progress, if not a breakthrough. And so the Minister of State with Responsibility for Labour, Dr. Carla Barnett, has decided that the tribunal should be postponed. She told us via phone that there is a more positive and productive atmosphere and progress is being made towards the undertaking given in the March 06th letter. The Labour Commissioner will continue to act as a go-between for the two sides. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced that BTL, BWSL and BEL have all pledged a million dollars to the COVID relief effort. He said BWSL is also given a discount on water services. And 20 BTL... 25% reduction in water rates to residential customers who consume less than 3,000 gallons per month. Again, this is upon the request of the government. That would work out to 35,234 customers, being 65% of the residential customers. So 65% of all residential customers will benefit from this 25% reduction. Uh, this, in the first instance, is for 
the months of March, April, and May, with the possibility of a further extension should the circumstances warrant. And BTL is giving free credit and upgraded bandwidth to its customers. To $1.7 million of worth of discounts on prepaid top-up to allow families to keep in contact with each other. And they're in the process of providing that now. And then a $0.6 million increase in bandwidth to enable Belizeans to work and study from home. I think they've already started to provide that. And they're pledging a further $2 million in free prepaid top-up to allow, again, for people to be able to communicate during this crisis. But unlike BTL and BWSL, BEL can't promise consumers any across-the-board ease on their bills. They say that they can only be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Corporate code for come back tomorrow. But the Prime Minister also challenged top executives of the utilities to take a pay cut like he did. Now, we didn't hear anything about that, but here's what Sean Fuller, the General Manager of Communications and Retail Services, had to say about general cost cutting. We have um, made a conscious decision to stop all major projects that are not completely necessary at this time. There's some system expansions that we were planning on doing this year that can, can cost up to $5 million if you add them all up. We've put them on hold until we've gotten over this hump. There's a couple other projects that are not as critical. One project that we've not put on hold is the Kikaka submarine cable. Uh, we're continuing that process. However, that will require some external parties to come in. We don't know how um, the truck restrictions will, will um, prevent us from getting that done as quickly as possible. But there are some projects that we will continue to do, those that are critical to the continued operation of serving our customers. But those that are not, we, will, we, were, we are putting on hold. Last week in our board meeting, there were our board of directors, especially and particularly those government appointed board members, made a decision to forego, forego a portion of their annual stipend that they get as board members. As a company, we're asking all employees within the organization, not only the executives of the company, all employees, to try and contribute as much as possible from their own earnings towards this cause. We have, as I mentioned, 320 employees, and we've always come together and put our own personal finances towards a good cause. We've had cases where we have employees who have had um, um, cancer and they've had some very, very high uh, bills that we've been able to, to assist with and we're doing the same for the country. We don't expect that anyone will say, listen, I can't do this um, because we are um, um, very essential services uh, employees and we will, we will keep our jobs. So we, we have to sacrifice as well for the better good of, of this country. Government today put out its own circular about interim cost-saving measures. It includes a six-month freeze on the creation of new posts, the filling of any vacant posts, payment in lieu of vacation leave, all new requests for advances, approval of any allowances, workshops, non-essential purchases, and a tight cap on overtime. At the start of the citywide state of emergency, police publicized wanted posters for a multitude of fugitives, most of whom were wanted for the offense of being a member of a gang. At the time, Commissioner of Police Chester Williams claimed to know where the majority of the fugitives had run to, and he warned their friends and family members not to be caught harboring or giving shelter to men who were actively being sought by police, because they too could face charges. And so said, so done. Police have spent the last three days rounding up four of those fugitives. They are Ainsworth Foreman, Jeffrey Buller, Lionel Longsworth, and O'Neill Ferguson. And while tonight those men are sitting in the Haddeville prison on the charge of gang offenses under the state of emergency, but they aren't the only ones charged with a crime. That's because all four men were hiding out with family and associates. On Tuesday, March 24th, Ainsworth Foreman was found in the Belama 4 area. He was in the company of 41-year-old Kendra Foreman and 22-year-old Christine Carcamo. The next day, Wednesday, March 25th, Jeffrey Buller and Lionel Longsworth were found in Ladyville. They were in the company of 23-year-old Tariq Gillett, 
and 23-year-old Teresita Vanson. And finally, today, Thursday, March 26th, police managed to locate Oniel Ferguson in the company of 32-year-old Randine Gillett. The associates of all four wanted men were themselves arrested and charged for the crime of harboring a person wanted by law enforcement for a gang-related offense. And so while there will be more gangsters in prison, they will have a lot of company. Well, we've seen a tally of all the suspected gang members who were rounded up and sent to jail under the state of emergency. That count, according to our sources, currently stands at 124 persons, representing 12 different gangs that are under the police department's magnifying lens. Today's issue of the Garden newspaper reports that these 124 have joined an additional 88 gang members who were already at the prison before the state of emergency was declared. None of those 232 gang members are over the age of 40. Two days ago, we told you about that ugly traffic accident on the George Price Highway, which claimed the life of 43-year-old Dorian Anthony, a resident of Belize City. As we reported sometime before 9 a.m. on Tuesday, Anthony was traveling in a red Mitsubishi Outlander SUV. In the vehicle at the time with him was 57-year-old Gary Trapp and Dawn Myers. It is uncertain who was driving and what exactly caused it. But when the vehicle arrived at an area between 12 and 13 on the George Price Highway, there was a blowout of its left rear wheel. That caused the driver to lose control and the SUV plunged into a parked 40-foot trailer that was parked in front of the Caribbean Paper Company. The vehicle was completely wrecked and when first responders arrived, they found it wedged under the trailer. Anthony was still trapped inside and he died on the scene. At a press conference held this morning, police told us what they know about the case so far. On Tuesday, the 24th of March, just after 9 a.m., um, Hattieville police visited an area between miles 12 and 13 on the George Price Highway, almost in front of the paper 12 factory, where upon arrival they observed a vehicle red in color under a trailer that was parked on the left-hand side of the road. And inside of the vehicle they saw the motionless body of a male person who was later identified as Dorian Anthony, 43 years old of a Nut Creek address. Police understand is that the vehicle was traveling from Belicity towards Hattieville when the vehicle experienced a blowout and the vehicle ended colliding on the trailer that was parked on the left-hand side of the road. Traveling with him were two other male persons who were treated and discharged on the same day. So you didn't indicate if they're they were speeding and that may have resulted in that blowout? That was not mentioned, but we suspect that that was one of the factors that caused the vehicle to overturn and afterwards end up in the, in, under the trailer, no? Uh, sir, have you all determined who the driver was? Not at this moment that I know. I know that uh, the, the person that was found inside the vehicle was between the driver and the passenger side, the front passenger side of the vehicle. Investigators are still trying to determine which of the three men was behind the driving wheel. The other two occupants of the vehicle survived the impact. Southern cops are looking for four men tonight who they say were involved in a brazen Monday night robbery near Bea Vista Village in the Toledo District at around 5 p.m. Nahum Banegas, a 57-year-old Salvadoran security guard, was riding his bicycle on his way to his house in Bea Vista. Before he could arrive, four men cornered him, put a beat down on him, and then robbed him of his cellular phone and the cash he had on him. But that wasn't enough for these thugs. They then forced Banegas to call his landlord on his cell phone that they stole from him. They then instructed him to lure his landlord from his home so that they could rob him as well. That second victim was, has been identified as 39-year-old Jose Lara. When he showed up looking for Banegas, his tenant, the four robbers also attacked him. One of them shot him in the buttocks. Here's what the deputy head of the National Criminal Investigation Branch had to say about the case today. On the 23rd of March 2020, Nahun Banegas, a security guard of Bea Vista, reported that 
he was heading home on a bicycle when he was ambushed by four male persons who uh, proceeded to ro rob him of his personal belongings and cash. Thereafter, uh, the robbers uh, forced him to make a phone call to his landlord so that the landlord would come to that area. Uh, shortly thereafter, the landlord came to the area and that is when uh, Nahum Banegas ran away and made good his escape from the rebels. Uh, at some point, uh, an attempt was made to uh, apprehend the landlord, but uh, he uh, fought off the rebels and as a result, he was shot uh, once and thereafter he made good his escape and he proceeded to the uh, Western, Re I mean, Southern Region Hospital where he was treated and released. So the fact that these persons forced the first victim to call the landlord, uh, it suggests that he, he does have some sort of personal knowledge of the, of the, the victims. It, do you all believe that it's a, a crime of chance or that these people knew the two victims? Yes, uh, from the information we have got is that yes, they uh, are persons that are familiar with the landlord. And, uh, he was lured to that area uh, in an attempt that he be robbed. Uh, again, we are seeking uh, these four male persons in connection to this report. Police say that they're looking for these four robbers and they believe that the assailants are from the same general area as the victims. In other news out of Bay of Vista, police are also reporting that they found an unlicensed firearm and they've charged several persons for it. At around 10.30 today, cops went to the village to conduct raids. They went to the home of 58-year-old Vilma Sanchez, a Honduran national. Also present at the time was 27-year-old Jose Laiva, 25-year-old Elicio Santos, 19-year-old Franklin Oriana, and 18-year-old Jason Oriana. The cops searched the property and they ended up discovering a gold and black 9mm pistol which had five live rounds of ammunition. The weapon was neatly tucked in the branches of a coconut tree in the yard. Since they were all present during the time of the search, they were all charged with keeping an unlicensed firearm and keeping unlicensed ammunition. Orange Walk Police are investigating the mysterious death of a man from that district who appears to have drowned. He's been identified as 37-year-old Nolasco Gomez and police say that he was found dead in a pond of water near Santa Marta Village. Here's more from police on the case. 26th of March 2020, Baltasar Campos, 55 years. The Legion reported that he made checks for one Nolasco Gonzalez on the Santa Marta Road where he found Nolasco Gonzalez uh, motionless in a pond of water. Information is that Nolasco Gonzalez was repairing a water pump in the pond when he fell and thereafter his body was found. A post-mortem examination will be conducted to determine uh, the cause of death. Sir, Sir. Sir based on, on the information you've received, is the suspicion is that he, he, he drowned? That is what is suspected at this time. No injuries or anything observed? Uh, no signs of any injuries were observed on the body. And finally, for tonight, we report on a stabbing which occurred in the early morning hours of Tuesday at a home on Grand Sally in Belize City. Police told us today that Nelson Nolberto Jr. was attacked by a relative after they had a quarrel. On Tuesday, the 24th of March, 2020, at about 1.50 a.m., police visited the Carl Huesner Memorial Hospital where they observed Nelson Nolberto Jr. with apparent stab wounds to his body. What police gathered so far is that Nelson Nolberto Jr. was at his residence at Grants Alley along with other family members socializing. When a dispute ensued between family members, and as a result of that, one of the family members inflicted the said injuries to him. He is presently admitted in a stable condition at this moment. As a result, police arrested and charged Robert Roches Edison, 27 years old, of a Grants Alley address for the crime of attempted murder, use of the limits of harm and dangerous harm. So what is the relation between the victim and the person charged? They are in laws. 
And that's all we have for you for tonight. Thanks for watching with your news. I'm Indora Craig. Remember that you can see a streaming video of this newscast at 7newsbelize.com. And remember to stick to your safety and hygienic practices, social distances of at least three feet, washing hands for 20 seconds, using hand sanitizer or just soap and water, and just not touching your face. Stay healthy, stay, stay safe, stay alert, but also stay calm, don't panic, and make sure to join Robin Schaefer here tomorrow. I'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, have a great night.